Welcome back to Unravel Travel. We're in Central Florida, where we're looking at the attractions outside the theme parks. One thing I noticed about this part of Florida is the serious passion for planes. You can see the extent of it here at the Fantasy of Flight Center, which boasts the largest private collection of historic aircraft. This place is a fascinating insight into the history of flight from the beginning to World War II. We participated in reenactments of World War II bombing missions as well as flight simulators. Like most themed attractions, there's lots to keep kids entertained also, from the hang gliding simulators to the hot air balloon rides. Adults, of course, can also test out their skills on them. You could easily pass half a day here, as there's a restaurant for lunch and a shop selling one-of-a-kind aviation antiques and souvenirs. There's also a daily flight demonstration where visitors can view some of their favorite planes taking to the skies for some impressive tricks and flying techniques. Golfing is an obvious attraction here in Florida, given the great weather and the championship courses. But it's not just for the serious golfer. Beginners too can try out their skills on a course like this, or maybe even take a lesson. The Eagle Broke in Lakeland is heralded as a premier golf experience, as it boasts superb scenery and a stunningly designed 18-hole championship course, with perfectly groomed greens and rolling hills. Outside of Eagle Broke and within a 50-mile radius, you'll find more than 500 beautiful holes of golf at some of the state's best courses. Golf is surprisingly reasonable, with excellent rates for groups or those who are staying at a golf resort for their holiday. Since I've arrived here, everyone has been asking me, have I been to Bok Tower yet? Now I'm finally here and I can see why anyone would recommend it. It's an oasis of tranquility and this majestic bell tower behind me is its pride and joy. The renowned Bok Tower Gardens is one of Florida's original tourism venues. Located on one of the highest points on the Florida Peninsula, Bok Tower Sanctuary is a national landmark. There are 128 acres of gardens and a bell tower housing one of the world's greatest carolins. Edward Bach never forgot the words of his grandmother, make the world a bit better or more beautiful because you've lived in it. Bach indeed left his mark on the world with his magnificent singing tower. When designing the tower, inspiration was drawn from the Gothic towers and churches of Europe but it was Edward Bach's love of nature that inspired the tower's decorative motifs. Although it was constructed to house the Carolyn, it is the centerpiece for the beautiful gardens also. In modern day Florida, Bach Tower Gardens draws thousands of nature, historic and music enthusiasts. There are also many family friendly garden areas, which give children the chance to learn about the gardens while observing the butterflies. On my travels, I like to find places that are wonderful, charming and different to everywhere else. I found just that here at Chalet Suzanne. It's an hour south of Orlando and it's welcomed stars like Robert Redford and Dolly Parton. This enchanting inn with 30 chalets is nestled on 70 acres. As you look around the sumptuous dining room, your eyes feast on a variety of artistic table settings created with treasures from around the world. But Chalet Suzanne's setting, which is on the National Register of Historic Places, is just the beginning. Wait until you taste the food. Chalet Suzanne has been serving its famous broiled grapefruit appetizer for decades, and guests are also treated to their famous soup romaine, which accompanied the astronauts on the Apollo 15 and 16 flights. In addition to numerous other honors, Chalet Suzanne has been voted one of Florida's top 20 restaurants for 30 consecutive years. Now that's what I call a record. Anyone who dines at this country inn and restaurant is joining thousands of people, including many celebrities who have made pilgrimages here since 1931. There's also the option to stay at Chalet Suzanne. You'll be able to relax in elegance in one of their 30 decorated guest rooms, many of which have jacuzzis. Once you've enjoyed the atmosphere and the food at the Chalet Suzanne restaurant, take the time to stroll around the wine dungeon, the gift boutique, the chapel antiques, 
the ceramic salon, the soup cannery and the private airstrip. Its owners pride themselves on a chalet restaurant that was started by their grandmother in 1931 and is carried on today by Denise Hinshaw and her family. The Chalet Suzanne is all about fine dining, uh, romance, relaxation and refreshment. Uh, my husband's grandmother started it back in 1931. Um, unfortunately, her husband passed away at an early age and so she had two small children, my father-in-law Carl and his sister, older sister, Suzanne, uh, to raise. And so she enjoyed um, entertaining people. And so they stuck signs out along the road all the way up to New York State and came home and waited two weeks and the first guest came. And it's been going on ever since. Florida was one of the first states to introduce the phenomenon of drive-in movies, with the first opening in 1938. Since then, its popularity has multiplied seven times over. Although many of these theatres have since closed, 10 of them are still open in Florida today. And one of the most famous is the Funland Drive-In Theatre. It opened in 1950 and the admission price was just 48 cent to see I Was a Male War Bride, starring Cary Grant. The single screen theatre had 700 speakers, but roll on almost 60 years and the drive-in theatre has a second screen and it's still an exciting Friday night outing for many visitors and locals. When the Terrace Hotel opened her doors in 1924, it was hailed as one of Florida's finest new inns. Located in the heart of the downtown district, the hotel reopened after a $13 million renovation in 1999 and has subsequently been granted historic status. When it comes to eating out, the main thing you should consider is what food you're in the mood for. There's lots of diners and steakhouses serving those American-sized portions, but for a fine dining experience, you should consider one of these beautiful gourmet restaurants. The Terrace Grill has also been given national recognition and is rated as one of Central Florida's finest eateries. When you arrive at Hollis Garden, you'll be overwhelmed by the beauty of this place at the lakefront, but there's actually much more than meets the eye. When you take a tour here, you'll see the butterfly garden, Elvis Presley's tree, and lots of unusual fruit and veg that you can eat. Neoclassical in design and featuring more than 10,000 flowers and shrubs, Hollis Garden chronicles Florida history. A tour of this garden will start at the beginning of the state's agrarian period to the modern era in which horticulture is driven primarily by aesthetics. The three main gardeners on site are worldly wise in their knowledge of all the trees, plants and flowers on site. They're also entertaining in showing you some of the quirky features or powers of certain plants. There's a lot of different plants tucked away in different areas of the park and uh, you have to look everywhere. Uh, we plant flowers in the ground, we plant flowers in the trees, uh, epiphytic orchids and bromeliads. So no matter where you look, you're going to see something. There's a plant here for everyone, whether it's to cure a thirst, a toothache, indigestion, and even one plant that has the distinct taste of gin. Uh, they are sour. I love sour. <laughs> Children will in particular delight in the fish pond and the butterfly garden. Hollis Garden is unsurprisingly a prime location for wedding photographs and it's also a lovely setting for a memorable holiday snack. When I first came to the States I went on a crazy shopping spree in all of the outlets but now I realise that you can get just as good value in many of the malls that are outside the typical tourist territory especially during the sale season. Because of the large number of tourists who visit Central Florida, the area is home to numerous discount and factory outlet centers. There's also several major upscale shopping malls, bringing in the more brand conscious holidaymakers and higher end residents. As a result, several major designers from Chanel to Louis Vuitton have shops in Florida, encouraging visitors to shop until they drop or their credit cards are maxed out. It's not just movie stars who have iconic status in this state. The legendary architect Frank Lloyd Wright designed this great educational temple, otherwise known as Florida Southern College. Frank Lloyd Wright left an undeniable mark on Florida Southern College. 
As an architect, Wright was virtually without parallel, and his legacy to the college distinguishes the campus from all others. Construction of his Child of the Sun campus started in 1938 with the Annie Pfeiffer Chapel, and it concluded in 1958 upon completion of the Polk County Science Building. Wright designed 18 structures for the campus, and 12 were built, representing the world's largest one-site grouping of Wright's work. The Child of the Sun Visitor Centre provides a home for the permanent photographs, furniture and drawings depicting Wright's relationship with the college. The centre also acts as a home for visiting exhibits on loan from various other Wright sites.